Good morning, everybody. You guys held up to your end of the bargain, and I've held up to mine. I said, if you guys kept showing up, I'd keep showing up. And so here we are, another beautiful Sunday morning. We're going to uh, switch it up this week. We uh, we don't want to get bored with the same old songs every week. So instead of doing uh, This Is The Day, we're going to... <laughs> that on the list, Billy. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Joe, Joe got it. Sunday morning crew. That's right. You know, we, we've been out here, thank you, Joe, we've been out here for an hour this morning already, and that day didn't start until I went, went to sing it. I guess it's telling me something. Anyway, we're going to start off today with a brand new uh, uh, opening song called, uh, I'm So Glad I'm a Part of the Family of God. It is a beautiful day to be in God's metaphorical house, worshiping his mighty name. Um, if you will, please turn to the inside cover of your bulletin and join me in our responsive call to worship this morning. No one has ever seen God. Amen. Dear friends, our opening hymn this morning can be found on your insert and it is called they'll know we are christians by our love Friend. 
as we continue to face unprecedented times in our lives, as we continue to see the uh, effects of the coronavirus ravage the world around us, and now as we see our nation in turmoil over racial injustice and, and, and everything that's going on with that, it is, it's mindful for us as Christians that uh, you know, we can get bogged down in what's going on around us and, and we can start to act like the world around us as if there is no hope. But on this morning, it is, it is time for us as Christians to lift up our voices and say, we do have hope. We have hope in a God who is bigger than all the things we face. We have hope in a God that can help us through all the trials and tribulations that we face in our lives. We have hope in a God who is big enough. And that's all you need to say, just big enough. And so this morning, if you've got a prayer on your heart, something that you're struggling with or something, something that somebody you know is struggling with, or maybe it's a praise you want to give to God, I just I ask you to take that and to let us together lift that up to God with our morning prayer. Let's go to God. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we find ourselves here in your presence. In the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit. Lord, in the presence of the Trinity, what could we possibly face that you couldn't handle on our behalf? And Lord, you see what's going on in this world. Lord, it's been going on since the beginning of time. Since that very first time in the garden where humankind chose to turn away from you and chose to lean on their own understanding. And you have been reconciling the world back to yourself ever since. So Lord, we do know that the trials and the tribulations we face, they are just part of the growing pains of leaning into the new kingdom, the new heaven and the new earth. But Lord, we acknowledge that it is still hard for us as Christians as we walk in this old world. Lord, we face troubles, we face trials. We face sickness, illness, death. We face injustice. We face misunderstanding. We face people who do not love us. And Lord, you know that we fail to love others as you have loved us. So Lord, in the face of all this that is going on today, we come together, we gather, we lift our voices up and we affirm that you alone are the sovereign God. And we lay all of our troubles at your feet. And we ask that you touch each one of these situations that we have lifted up in our hearts and with our lips today as only you can. And if you choose to make them better according to our will, so be it. But if you don't, we trust that you will make them count for our good and your ultimate glory. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray today. Amen. Our first scripture today comes from the second letter from Paul to the church of Corinth. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 15, 40. Hear these words today. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, this is the word of God this morning for us, the people of God. Amen. Now about that holy kiss. Maybe we'll hold off on the holy kiss for just a little bit, okay? Our responsive reading today can be found on the inside cover of your bulletin. It's the 8th Psalm. Please join me in our responsive reading. O Lord, our, our Lord. Your glory is chanted above the heavens by the mouth of babes and infants. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have established. Oh, I, 
I, I stole y'all's line, didn't I? <laughs> what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Yet you have made them little less than God. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. All sheep and oxen. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord. Amen. Before we go to God's word, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we are honored to be in your holy presence. We are honored to be here for the simple purpose of emptying ourselves in worship to you, praising your mighty name, celebrating the love, the peace, and the unity of the Holy Trinity. God, this is such a peaceful time when we are able to come together as like-minded Christians. No matter what the world throws at us during the week, Lord, it is good to be able to come to this place, to be of one mind and one heart and one soul, 
as we lift our voices up in song to you, as we hear your word proclaimed and explained. It is truly an honor and a blessing to be here this morning. Thank you, God, for preparing this place for us, for sending the Holy Spirit to be here, to welcome us in. Lord, thank you for all you do for us. And God, as your preacher, I'm especially thankful for the opportunity to lead your people, to bring a word of hope each week. And I do pray that it is your word of hope. For if I ever say anything that is not your word or your will, I pray that you shut my mouth and shut the ears of those who would hear. Dear God, we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Genesis. Beginning in the first chapter the first verse where we hear these words in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters and God said let there be light and there was light God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place. And let dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seeds according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and the days and the years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God sent them, set them in the vault of the sky to give light to the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing which with the water teems and it moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kind, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kind, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock, 
and all the wild animals and over the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and over the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said to you, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. My friends, this is the word of God this morning for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, I think the old saying goes, you can pick your friends, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. No, no, wait, I don't think it goes like that. That's not right. You can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. Wait, that, that, that sounds like it. So you can pick your friends, but you can not pick your family. For better or worse, most of us can attest that this statement is absolutely true. So today, we are going to begin a new sermon series. And the name of that sermon series that we will run through August is called Family Reunion, which is kind of appropriate because we're moving into summertime. In fact, I just came back last night from a family reunion of sorts, was it not here? Down in Somerville. Uh, and we had a little get there. So we're moving into the season of family reunions. And so it's very appropriate that this sermon series will focus on family. And today... We, we start with the book of Genesis. In fact, we're going to be in Genesis for the next 10 weeks. And I know that's a weird place for modern Christians to be. We, we like the letters of Paul. We like the gospel accounts. We shy away from Revelation usually. But we don't usually spend too much time in the Old Testament. So it's going to be kind of uh, a new ground for all of us here. But um, Genesis, the reason we're going to be in Genesis is because Genesis is a book all about family. If you've ever read it from front to back, from chapter 1 to chapter 50, you know that it really is an account about family. Now, we all have what we call, what psychologists call our family of origin. That's the family we're born into. With all of its glories and all of its issues, we all have a family of origin. But we are also, like the song that we sang to start today's worship service off, we are all a part of the family of God. So we hold dual citizenship, as it were, in two different families. And as we start looking at what it means to be family, what better place than on Trinity Sunday in the United Methodist Church that we look at God's perfect family. And so that's what the title of today's sermon is, is God's Perfect Family. In the beginning. That's how Genesis starts. And what a, no, no better place to start than in the beginning. Now, if you read, like I don't, but if you read Genesis in the original Hebrew, five words in to the Hebrew book of Genesis, you have the word Elohim. The word Elohim is one of the words that we translate into the English God. But here's the thing about the word Elohim. Elohim in Hebrew is a plural word. It actually means God's up. So what does that mean? Most readers of the English Old Testament never realize that that's a plural word, even though we're given some clues later on, and I try to accentuate them in the reading. But we don't even realize that the plural is used there. But what does that mean when it says... Elohim or God. 
the first thing that it needs is it's referring to God the Father, who is doing the speaking and the creating. So we have God the Father right there in the beginning. And then we have in about verse 2 or verse 3, when it's talking about the waters and the darkness was over the water, and it said, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. So in this Hebrew word Elohim, that is a plural, we already see the hand of God the Father at work. We see the, the Greek word is uh, 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 pneuma. The Hebrew word is ruach, which is the Spirit of God or the breath of God moving over the waters. And then if you fast forward a few centuries and a few books in the Bible to the Gospel according to John, in the beginning, same way as Genesis starts, John starts his Gospel with, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Well, who was that Word that John was talking about? God the Son, Jesus Christ. So in the beginning of Genesis, this Hebrew word Elohim that we, we don't, most of us have never even heard that word. It is a plural word that gives us a glimpse at God's perfect family that he starts his word off with, which is the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So as we dive into our study of families, we have a picture in Genesis 1 of God's perfect family. Now, things are divine and things are perfect in the scripture that I read you this morning. And I want you to hold on to that perfection. I want you to grasp it tight because it only lasts for two short chapters. God's perfect family, well, no, hold on. Before I get myself into theological hot water, God's perfect family lasts forever. But our participation in God's perfect family lasts two short chapters in this book. Everything is perfect in these two chapters. Everything is in perfect harmony. Then comes mankind. We come into the story a little bit later on day six of creation. We are given a beautiful place to live in chapter two called the Garden of Eden. We are given a wonderful job, as any farmer will attest, of tilling the land and, and tending to God's plants in his soil. And then it gets a little bit messy. The rest of Genesis is a story that starts to incrementally focus in on one family who God chooses to bless the rest of the world through. But here's the problem. The book of Genesis, as we'll find out over the next 10 weeks, and those of you that have been doing my online Bible study with me, we know that this is not God's perfect family. Now, as we move along through this, this looking at this view of God's perfect family or of God's family, things are going to take an interesting turn in the book of Genesis. You see, Genesis 1 gives us the, the model of God's perfect family, how God sets it up to be exactly what he wants it to be. And the rest of the story just gets worse and worse and worse. In Genesis chapter 4, you're going to see murder, where one brother kills another. You're going to see lust come into the picture. You're going to see incest. You're going to see rape. You're going to see incest slash rape. You're going to see adultery. You're going to see sibling rivalry, you're going to see trickery and betrayal, just to name a few of the things that we will see in the book of Genesis as we go along. You see, the book of Genesis moves us far, far away from God's perfect family. Here's the thing about the Holy Trinity. It is a very difficult thing to explain. And you can ask any scholar, any theologian, or any layperson who's ever put any serious study into the doctrine of the Trinity, and they'll tell you that no matter how you try to explain the Holy Trinity, 
you're going to trip up on something because it's so enormous that we can't wrap our minds around. I've been taking seminary classes now for six years. And if I stood up here and tried to explain the doctrine of the Trinity to you, well, I'm going to stumble over myself, I'm going to stumble over my words, and pretty soon you're going to be so confused you don't even know where you're at because you're following me down a bunch of rabbit trails that I don't even know where I'm going. You see, it is difficult to explain, but here's the thing. I might not be able to explain it to you, but I can show you the Holy Trinity. I can show you God's hand at work in different ways. I can show you the power of the Holy Spirit moving amongst you people when, when there's things to be done in the kingdom of God and you go out and you do God's work. I can show you the love of Jesus Christ when we reach down and we pick somebody up that has been beat down by life and oppression or by circumstances or by addiction and you reach down and you give them a hand up, I can show you the love of God. As I was out here yesterday morning kind of looking at where to best set this place up and where we'd all have God's beautiful shade, I saw the hand of God in something as, as intricate that we pass every day as the leaf on that tree. So I can show you the Holy Trinity, my friends, but I can't explain it to you. But I can also show you examples in God's perfect world of imperfection. The Holy Trinity was the only thing perfect that we had after the fall. Before the fall in Genesis, everything was perfect. Everything was in perfect love, unity, and harmony until we came into the picture. But through the messiness, God continues to work. God continues to reconcile a broken and a hurting world back to himself. Most scholars will tell you, most preachers will tell you that each and every one of us here today deserves exactly what we never get. We deserve the fires of hell for eternity because of how far we have strayed away at times. But isn't it a good thing to know that God works in us despite our message? That he doesn't look for the perfect person Lord knows you would never have a pastor up here ever if God only worked through perfect people. Lord knows we wouldn't have a church family if God only worked through perfect people. So in the midst of messiness, God shows up. And in a wonderful way, that makes every one of us a part of God's perfect family. Now friends, I've never met anyone in my life who claimed to have a perfect family. Even in the best families, there's the black sheep, the funny uncle, the recalcitrant cousin. It is true. We can pick our friends. And yes, we can pick our noses. But we can't pick our families. Families are a wonderful messy, sometimes aggravating, sometimes wonderful gift from God. But in the characters we'll meet over the next 10 or so weeks, they couldn't pick their families either. But they were picked by God. So as I stand before you this morning, I would like to give you this word of gospel hope. The gospel of hope lies in the fact that God moves in us and in our lives despite our family messes, despite the people in our families that we don't get along with, the ones that aggravate us, and yes, the ones we aggravate. But we might be one of the ones I listen to. So I thank God this morning that God has given us another great example. This morning it is the image of the Holy Trinity for it represents the eternal love, joy, and peace of God's perfect family. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
My friends, I've got a couple of announcements I want to share with you before we do our closing hymn. Mama. And I normally don't do this, but since they're already in the bulletin for me, I know you guys could read them, but uh, I, I did. I want to hit on two of these three that are in there. Uh, number one, uh, Doc Owens and his wife Maxine are celebrating their, um, or have celebrated their 64th wedding anniversary this last week. And uh, I know they're not with us because of uh, ongoing concerns with the virus. Uh, hopefully they'll watch this video later on and know that, uh, that we name checked them. We dropped their names in the middle of the service and uh, we want to wish them well and congratulate them for 64 years of wonderful marriage. Um, just want to let you know next week's uh, sermon information. We will uh, see where God starts to choose uh, by choosing an imperfect family to do his work. If you want to uh, read the scripture, it's in there for you, Genesis uh, 18. You'll, uh, I'm just telling you, if you want some of the best, most intriguing reading you'll ever read, pick up the Bible and start in the book of Genesis. I mean, it's got some great stories. And barring that, watch some of the video Bible studies I'm doing. I'm, I've started in Genesis. I'm about halfway through Genesis right now. I mean, you'll get some great stories. So, these stories will provide a lot of backdrop for our um, for our sermon series as we go forward. And then last but not least, I don't know if you guys have heard it. I'm sure some of you have. But uh, our beloved Epworth Children's Home up in uh, Columbia, they suffered a fire here recently. Their maintenance shed that, that uh, houses all their supplies for the kids burnt down. They lost a lot of supplies. They are in urgent need and have put out a statewide call for supplies to resupply what they have lost. On the back of your bulletin is the supply list. Uh, it's also floating around on Facebook. We put it on uh, North's Facebook page. Uh, and Ms. Barbara said, where's Ms. Barbara? Ah, Ms. Barbara says she's got larger copies if you would like. Um, they have a lot of needs. This basket on the table this morning is a representative uh, of what their needs are. Ms. Barbara says we've got somebody that can take the supplies up to Epworth if we can gather them and either let myself or her know and we will get them up there. You also can look on here. They've got an address for the Epworth Children's Home. You can, and they've got an Amazon wish list. You can order it from Amazon, have it shipped directly up there. You can also order from Target, from Walmart, um, or any other retailer and just pay for it and have it shipped directly up there, uh, which will kind of circumvent the need to deliver it. But we can also deliver it as well so i want you to keep that in mind with that said are there any other announcements this morning for the good of the church before we close out with our closing hymn any other announcements at all going twice going once and that's it all right uh, our closing hymn can be found on your insert holy holy holy
given us a perfect example of his perfect family. Our families might not look perfect just quite yet, but just remember, God is still at work in our lives. He's still creating things anew. And brothers and sisters, I started with Genesis 1-1 this morning, but I guarantee you I've read all the way to the end of the story, and I know how it ends. And God's family, and we are a part of that, will be perfect again one day. So I ask you to treasure that into your heart this morning as your gospel hope. And I send you out with this blessing. Go in peace. May the grace of God, may the love of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the one perfect family of God, go with you now and forevermore. Amen. Also, everybody, be sure to tell Nag and happy birthday. He turned 16 today. Hey folks, remember to click the subscribe button below and ring the bell to be notified when we post new content. And as always, if today's video touched you in some way, please hit the thumbs up button and leave us a comment. We love to hear how our content impacts your walk with Jesus Christ. Until next time, God bless.